you that have been following the last few weeks, you know exactly where we are at now. We are the next instalment of our short stories, his story. So we are going to welcome to the front, without further ado, our very next storyteller, Mr. Gerald Naylor. <laughs> Do we need to get comfy, Gerald? Do I need an uh, armchair and a hot yeah. chocolate? Can you see me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gerald, tell us a little bit about you. A little bit about me. Initially. Initially. We'll, we'll move on to the gritty Well, stuff. the questions you asked, you, 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 know, you sent me, you said, what, what's my name? My name's Gerald Naylor, you know that. Yeah, you've got that one. That's what you just said. Um, where, where are you from and what do you do? What do I do? Yeah. Right, where am I from? I'm from Lower Gornal. <laughs> um, I was born in um, Lake Street, Lower Gornal. I was born at number 89. Wow. And Yvonne, my wife, of 54 years, wow. um, was born at number 44. Okay. And Lake Street Methodist Church was right in the middle. <laughs> wow. That yeah. is brilliant. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So, 50 how many? 50 Fif 54. Yeah, we got married in 19... Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. 1960. You want to know what I do or what yeah. I did? You, what you do, what you did. What I did. Occupation-wise How long you got? 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> 10 minutes, okay. Well, I should be able to do that in 10 minutes. Yeah, I, um, I started out life as a student apprentice at... Um, a, John Tom a company called John Thompson's. Ooh. Yeah? <laughs> so there's, there's a fan. Yeah. So <laughs> I did, um, I did a, a student apprenticeship and um, uh, at the end of it en ended up with an honours degree in engineering. Wow. Okay. And uh, I worked in their nuclear projects office for about three or four years. I worked on the design of nuclear power nuclear the boilers for nuclear power stations. And um, it was uh, fascinating, but that only lasted three years because the, uh, the government stopped doing nu nuclear stuff. Um, so I changed, and then, then I spent about 30 years in the OIT industry working for big American companies. Okay. So Would it be fair to say you still do that, or you may have... No, I'm retired, goodness me. I'm, the, I'm 77, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. That's how I don't. Yeah. That's how I feel. I'm going. <laughs> okay. So, bringing it around to your story now, who or what influ first influenced you well, in faith in Jesus? I think, well, growing up in 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 Lake Street and in Gornal, you know, um, was quite an experience because it was um, uh, mainly I was in Lake Street and. Uh, I can remember in my youth, I was quite young, uh, when my father died. Um, he, um, he committed suicide when I was eight years of age. And um, I can remember, he, he hung himself. Um, uh, and um, that was quite a traumatic experience, as you could well imagine. Um, but, I, you know, I'm reminded of that uh, song that... Sam read out, read out last last week, you know, in, in, and um, it talked about being hedged around, yeah. you know, from the the back and from the front, and even you know after after that experience, I felt when I was young, I, I could feel you know felt insecure because of what had happened, you know, I, I could recall it vividly on my mind, you know. Um, my mother bending over him and r rubbing his hands together to to bring him round, you know, but it, it didn't. Um, but that was many years ago, right? And um, I thought that the Lord hedged me in, right, and and looked after me. And over the years. You know, I got together with Yvonne. I mean, the reason why I went to church was because Yvonne was there. <laughs> you know, <coughs> um, 
And, uh, and of course, I got to know her family, and, and um, I, I got to know her father. And um, he was a big influencer in, in, in the, the walk that I was about to take, you know. Um, uh, and uh, it was, I think, in 1980, it was the 80s, he, uh, he suffered with cancer. And um, I can always remember th the day that he was told. He was told he'd got two days to live. And um, um, I can remember being in the bedroom, because, I mean, by then he'd, he'd lost a lot of weight. He'd, he, was, um, he was only about six stone, and I used to carry him to bed. And um, he was in his, uh, his bed, and uh, we, we stood at the bottom of the bed, and he looked at me, and he, he said, uh, bear with me. <laughs> he said, um, I love you as much as I love my daughter. And that blew me away. And, um, you know, I've often thought about it, because he was a marvelous Christian, and it, funnily enough, as we were, were singing and as you were reading that psalm, you know, that, that, that song <coughs> about the miry clay, you know, his, his, um, his favourite hymn was number 336 in the Methodist hymn book. <laughs> you know, and it goes like this, in loving kindness, Jesus came, came my soul in mercy to reclaim and from the depths of sin and shame through grace he lifted me. And that was, that was my testimony as far as, you know, he, he influenced me a, a, a great deal. Um, but I guess um, I didn't come to know the Lord until I was, um, was 17. I was 17. Then. Um, and in those days, um, obviously Liz at the back, she'll remember. Yeah, in those days we used to have specials at the uh, Methodist churches every, uh, and, 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 uh, this weekend, it was a, a men's weekend, right? and um, the church got together a, a men's choir, male voice choir, and, um, and it was held on a Saturday night and a, a Sunday night. Well, I'd been on the, the Saturday night, you know, because I wanted to be close to where she was, you know, and, uh, <laughs> um, and, and I, I went on the Sunday night, and it was the Reverend David McLagan. He was a um, Scottish minister, Church of Scotland, and he was part of the Billy Graham team at one point. And um, I remember he spoke on L Luke chapter 19. Now, you don't know what's in Luke chapter 19 if I ask you, do you? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you. It's all the story of Zacchaeus. Now, you'll know that now, won't you? Zacchaeus was a very little man, and a very little man was he. <laughs> yeah? He climbed up in the sycamore sycamore tree for the saviour he wanted to see right there you go you got it right and um uh, and he spoke on on on, on Zacchaeus and um I can remember I can even remember the points that he came out with you know the man Zacchaeus who was a tax collector for the Romans the meeting meeting Jesus uh the cost the, how much it cost him because he ended up giving back four times the, the ones he cheated, you know. Uh, and, and finally, the urgency. The urgency for him to come down out of the tree, right, uh, and, and come and meet with Jesus. And there's something to remember. It's urgent that everybody thinks about that, to come down from the tree, come down from where you are, and, and meet, meet Jesus. And, and that, was, that was it. And he spoke on that, and... And I was, um, I was right at the back of the church, and uh, it was full, it was packed, and um, I just felt a sudden urge to move forward, and he, he, because um, he, he made an altar call, and um, I, uh, I, I, I just felt I couldn't stay in the seat, and uh, it was when, uh, it was in the singing of that hymn, you know, the, you know the one I mean, just as I am. Without one plea. Yeah, well, it was a verse, I think it's verse 6. And I just couldn't stay in my seat when, when I... It was, just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yea, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come. And that's when I got up out of my seat and went forward and 
um, knelt at the communion rail and um, uh, I just had such an experience, it was just mind boggling. Uh, I, 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 difficult to describe, and I think you've probably heard many people say exactly the same thing. You know, I just felt as though I'd been scrubbed clean on the inside and on the outside. That's, uh, <laughs> I guess, the best way I can, I can describe it. But, but yeah, that's 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 the way. I so uh, you were a teenager. Seventeen. And you're seventy-seven now. Yeah. So that's a long, a long, long, long time. I've been involved oh. in the church a long time. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. So God's been faithful over years. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, oh, yes. Very much so. Very much so. Uh, I mean, Yvonne and myself spent uh, something like 20 years in, in leadership at, um, at Lake Street uh, alone. And um, during that period of time, we must have done about, I think it was about 20, 20 courses, 20 Alpha courses. Wow. And... Uh, and seeing lots of people come to know the Lord, and okay. that's been great. That's you know, but, uh, so, yeah. so with your story, Gerald, how significant do you think it is for us to share our stories? Well, how easy do you find it to share your story? Well, I'm sharing my story every week now because I'm, I'm, I'm going to Hope House, and and. Uh, <laughs> and, and uh, uh, and my friend at the back there, Dave, uh, uh, I, I talk to him quite a bit. <laughs> but yes, uh, I'm doing that. And uh, But, you know, the, over the years, Alpha meant a great deal to us. And we've seen so many people come to know the Lord. And I could, you know, I could, I could bore you with so many examples of where people came. And there's one person that, that comes to mind. We'd, we'd done the Alpha course and we'd arranged a, an away day at Keffin Lee. And um, we went the one weekend and we, we asked for testimonies. And there's this one woman, her name was Christine. And um, she'd got a brain tumour and she hadn't got long to live. And um, he, she gave a testimony. And um, I, I shall never forget it. She stood up and she said, I thank Jesus for my tumour. Because without a tumour, I wouldn't have met Jesus. Wow. You know, uh, and that was so powerful. Yeah. You know, so amazing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, over the years, we 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 did Alpha, and uh, and that was, oh, well, I think that was such a such a wonderful experience. I mean, it, it's important that you know we share what God has given us, and and He's given us yeah. such a wonderful gift, and. Um, not to be able to take advantage of that gift yeah. is to me, you know, uh, yeah. well, it's stupid, isn't it, really? <laughs> I mean, let's face it. I mean, it's such a, such a wonderful gift that uh, we can't, we can't. Just one last thought. Mm -hmm. You've obviously been doing this for 60 years. You're pretty good at telling your story and mm. engaging. Have you got any tips for any of us that struggle to share our stories? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just be yourself. <laughs> just be yourself, and uh, yeah. and just talk to people naturally, and you know, and just you. You don't. Have, I think you'll never argue anybody into the faith. You'll never argue anybody into it. Um, you, you just talk to people, and 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 you know, do what Jesus did. When Jesus talked to people, if, if they were fishermen, he talked about fishing. If, if they were carpenters, he talked about carpentry. You know, I mean, that's yeah. what he did. Brilliant. That's what he did. Yeah. That's absolutely incredible. What a story. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, lovely. Wow. That is amazing. What a story. After 60 years, still telling it, and God is still doing something now. God doesn't just do one thing and leave you to it. And sometimes, you know, we can pray about God watching over us, overseeing us, overshadowing us. And that can make God sound quite remote and quite distant, that he's just keeping an eye on us. But actually, he knits himself in and out of our day. And we just look at Gerald's story and, and the heartache that some of it represents and God has just knitted himself through every day 
of the last 60 years, and that's just quite incredible. So, Gerald, thank you for sharing your amazing story. Thank you.